Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, it's time to start doing the work to this amplifier. And you can see we've already taken some of it apart. And this is what I'm going to call a build series rather than a mod series because there's very little of the original circuit that we're going to be using. If you're curious about that, watch the first video in the series. The rest of these are going to be about building this amp. And this is basically a gut and rebuild. We're using very little, if any, of the original circuit other than the power supply is very similar. So, yeah, let's get busy building this little amp. Okay, so we're inside this little amp getting ready to do the rewiring. And as you can see, the output transformer has been removed. And I stripped this board down, took all the, you know, it was looked like this originally. And I took all these parts off. You can leave this one cap in place here. And we're not really changing this area in here very much either. So before you get started, print up the schematic and have it handy. And I also print up the pinout for the output tube. And then I print up the pinout for this 6SF5 driver tube we're going to be using. And that helps you from getting confused when you're looking at the tubes. And I'll put these on my website. They'll be downloadable in the folder under projects. I think that's the folder. Anyway, I'll put a link in the description. Let's zoom in here and kind of go over what we've done so far. And I wanted to get started installing some of these parts to try to figure out how I wanted to wire this thing up and what we were changing. So one thing I changed was this yellow. Well, let me just start looking inside here, right, and show you what we're not messing with. One of the things we're not changing is the rectifier tube. So these blue wires here are the high voltage AC. These yellow wires are the 5 volt heater for the rectifier tube and then the choke for the power supply comes over and connects up to pin 8 and then this yellow wire is connected to here now originally it came through and connected to a little standoff I cut that little standoff just off of the tag strip and then soldered the wire directly like that just a little neater and it gets this little tab out of your way now if you haven't done anything to the amp it originally had a 150 uf cap here you need to replace it with a 22 uf and positive goes here the negative goes to this little bus here and then this bus connects to this eyelet okay and then if we look under here, this standoff is then connected to this eyelet here, which is the center tap of the transformer, of the high voltage AC. So the center tap is connected to here, and then this comes through the tag strip when you put this screw in, and this becomes your main ground point, or what would be the star ground point. So everything is grounded through here including these two caps and then again that's the star ground point and that's screwed to the chassis now one of the things i am going to do i'm pretty sure that this paint is still on the chassis so i'm going to remove this standoff and the screw to it and scrape the paint off and then rebolt this down to make sure it's good and tight and we got a good connection to the chassis with the star ground point Okay, so again, we're not changing this part of the power supply, and then you can reuse this 22 UF cap, which is the filter decoupling cap for the front end 
and will also be the decoupling cap for the screen since we're wiring this thing up as a pentode. So what I wanted to start with was connecting up the cathodes and the grids of both of the tubes. Okay, so the other thing that we did, and there originally was this red wire for grounding these tag strip terminals, and to me that was just confusing. Why would you have a red wire for a ground? So I replaced it with a black wire just to make it less confusing, okay? So this terminal here and this terminal here are going to be grounded, okay? So you connect the jumper wire from the center of this to here, and then let me scoot this down a little bit. And then we connect from this terminal, kind of loop up, go through the bottom of the tag strip here. It comes up and connects to the star ground point. And you just loop it over and solder it on. So you see this black wire comes down across to here. So this is a ground. And then I showed you underneath it connects from here to here. And this is another ground. So, first thing I hooked up was the cathode for the output tube. So, we come in here, and this is pin 3. Let me see if I can get that out of your way where you can see it. There you go. Pin 3 comes up and connects to this end terminal on the tag strip. So, this goes from here to pin three, just like that. So then the next thing we want to connect up is the grid for the output tube, and that goes from pin two, comes up here, and connects to this second terminal on our tag strip. So then we put this 470K grid leak resistor from this terminal to the ground. And that completes the cathode connection and the grid connection to the tube. And like I said, this is our grid leak resistor to ground. Then on the other side here, we have our 120 ohm resistor. It goes across from here to ground. So this is the cathode to ground. And then this is the bypass cap that goes across that resistor. So let's look at the schematic and I'll show you what I'm doing here. So we'll pretend like this is our terminal strip, right? We've got the wire here that goes over to pin 2. And then we have our 470K resistor that goes to ground. And then later we'll be connecting our coupling cap across here. So, now we're going to wire up the grid and the cathode of the driver tube. So, when we look at our pinout chart, we can see that pin 2 is cathode, pin 3 is the grid. And it's easier to just do this like one little section at a time like this and not get overwhelmed. So we connect to pin two with this red wire comes up here, connects to this terminal on this tag strip. And then we have this 820 ohm resistor that comes over to ground. Then on this side, we've got the grid leak resistor and this is a little different than the schematic, and I'm going to draw this up when I get done and, and put this on the website. But we're going to use a 1 meg grid leak resistor because we're going to be running a 100K potentiometer in the front of the amp for our volume control. And we're adding this 1 meg resistor just in case the volume control fails that we 
always have a reference to ground on the grid. So we put this one meg resistor between the center of this and the center of that. And then you hook up the volume control to this terminal here in the center. You ground it here because again this is a ground point. So that's the signal ground, that's the signal positive input signal that's going to the grid of the driver tube. Connects there. And then one of the things we're going to be doing is if we look at our pinout, we notice that we're using pins 2 and 3. On this tube, pin 4 is not connected to anything. Pin 5 is the plate. Okay? So if we look at our schematic, we need to put this 10K resistor that is a grid stopper in between or in series with the input signal to the grid of the tube. Now a grid stopper, you want to replace it as close to the tube pin as you can. So what we did is we took this pin here that's unused on this tube and used it as a tag point. So we put the 10K resistor between pins 3 and 4 on the tube and then we connected a wire from pin 4 up here to the input signal or this terminal on the tag strip. And that gets the cathode and the grid wired up. Again, looking at the schematic, we've got the cathode connected to this 820 ohm resistor to ground. And we'll put this stuff in later, this extra feedback wiring and everything. But we've got a nice tag point here to connect everything to as we move further in with the wiring of the amplifier. So, the next thing we need to do is I need to wire up this part right here. We've got this already done. This is the pin coming off the rectifier tube. It goes through the choke. It's going to connect here, which both of the output transformers connect to this same point right here. And then there's, in our amp, this is that big 150 UF cap. And like I said, I'm going to redraw this, but for now, you can follow along with what we're doing. And then you can see this 265 volt is connected here to our output transformer. So, need to install the output transformers. And then we need to put this 820 ohm resistor from this point to this point. There's going to be... The existing 22 UF cap that I showed you, which is this guy right here. And then this cap is this big blue guy. And then this cap right here is this guy. So, I need to put this 820 ohm resistor in. Then we'll have the voltage here that we can connect to the screen of the output tube. We'll have the output transformers installed where we can hook the other wire off the primary of the output transformer over here to the plate of the output tube. And then we'll be finished wiring up the output tube. And then we can work on bringing the voltage here, put our plate load resistor in, and then put in our coupling cap. And also this 150K resistor to the cathode. And I think this is going to work out really good. So let me get working on that, and then I'll show you what that looks like. So I hope you're enjoying this build series on this little amp. I think at the end of the day, this is going to be a more attractive amp than the little Maggie console pull that this is based off of. And so this is a fun little project. It'll be a neat little amp when we're done. If you're enjoying this, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters, people that have joined the membership on the channel, as well as folks that make donations or 
send me amps to modify like this one here and provide fun content so we can all learn about tube audio. And until the next video, have a nice day.